go. Get on them knees and bow down. Bow down. Get on them knees right now. Johnny Fontana, Half Amazing TV, back with another video. MoMA is really meticulous, right, about and calculated about what genre of music, what energy of music is playing like every hour to half hour. He has a plan every hour of how, what genre should be played, how it, how the energy should build up and blah, blah, blah. And then you kind of strategically book the DJs in that way. You know, I, I never like to tell DJs what to play because it throws them off. Right. You know what I mean? So I try to book DJs who I think are savvy enough that if I put them at a certain set time that corresponds to their strength, that's what they're going to do. We are in the midst of summer. Welcome to Latin House. First of all, this is not a full-on mix. So for those who were expecting a mix, this is not. This is a tutorial which includes mixes. So you'll get the music and the lesson, the education. But it's not just a full-on mix. So I'm sorry for those who thought about that. It was not clickbait. Bait. Now, when it comes to Latin House, we're going to get right into it. When it comes to Latin House, it's not just playing the music, right? What allows me to be able to play the way that I play is because of my self-immersion, right? Just naturally, the three things that allow me to play the way that I play and understand music and program music. One, naturally, I am an introvert, right? We talked about that before, how, you know, DJs tend to be very introverted, right? So for me, I'm always in my head, always in my space, always thinking about things, always thinking about the dynamics between how music relates to, to moods, to lighting, to everything, right? Um, to culture, um, always assessing things, right? Always have my finger on the pulse of what's happening in various different social communities, whether it be music, sports, manosphere, red pill, black pill, blue pill, incel, mid MGTOW, I'm always involved in figuring out what's going on, right? What's the temperature of the of of of, of the current, you know, uh, dynamic within our society. Number two, I grew up in New York City. You know, that's why hip hop DJs could play any record. Y'all both DJs. Y'all have to know every single genre of music to be a competent mm -hmm. hip hop DJ. Um, can you talk to me a little bit about that? But part mm -hmm. of that I would I would assign to just the idea that I grew up in New York mm -hmm. and I'm born in 1966. I got to taste Black Power movement. I got to taste uh, the explosion of Salsa in the 70s. I got to taste. And when I say taste, I'm saying like, like I was in the parks, I was, you know, I got to be a part of playground basketball culture. You know, I am first generation, you know, sneaker culture in its burgeoning stage, burgeoning stage. I grew up around a whole lot of different people, whole lot of cultures, whole lot of different energies that you don't find if you live in, in a very monocultural, you know, community where it's just like you see the same people, same energies. I grew up with so many different, you know, international um, cultures. Number three, my family is multicultural. So I have family in France, in Europe, in Spain, in Jamaica, in Haiti, you know, in Africa. So, and I traveled even while in the military, I traveled a lot. And because of those two previous factors, I'm able to then immerse myself into these cultures, right? So, when I'm in various countries, I want to learn the language, right? Uh, when I was in Latvia, I learned how to get around without even having to speak English. When I'm in Colombia, I want to speak the Spanish, right? I, I have a thing for accents. I can understand the difference between the Colombian accent, between the Argentinian accent, between the Puerto Rican, Dominican, the Cuban, Brazil, uh, and so I pride myself on all of that, right? So I've been exposed to all that. So when it comes to Latin house, it's not just playing it, it's really understanding the groove, you know, the culture, 
right? Everything that comes along with it, the people, right? That's very important. And it's so funny because I never knew or I never understood why it is that I am the way that I am. And I realized that I'm not the only one that has had the privilege of having this education or attaining this education, right? Clip two, go. I, I grew up in a, like going to the club and seeing Ross one. And to me, Ross handled one of the, you know, he would handle Playhouse like, like it was nothing. And Nitro was part of that thing too, where he would go see Ross one because when the first everyday people I went to, um, Nitro was get he's he said to go up, and Ross one walked in and he's like, oh, fuck, I'm nervous now. And I said, why? He's like, dude, I grew up watching Ross one. Now he's gonna hear what? me, DJ. And then I was just like, oh, he's part of that generation that would go watch DJs control a room and know what works at certain times. Mm -hmm. And I was that was I was just like. Oh, Maybe me and him are like part of the last people that want to go see bottle service DJs and learn yeah. how to DJ like that. So what is that? That's essentially booth riding. That's what I used to do when I was a young kid. And that's why I say like right now, like a lot of folks want to know if I'm playing out or whatever. Dude, it's very difficult for me. Okay. DJs are also the best too. Yeah. It was like the best DJs in New York did those kind of rooms back then. So all those dudes like back then, you'd go out and check them out. And it was like, to me, it was just like, other than like hearing mixtape and radio DJs, I was like, yo, these guys are like the most talented. They're putting together like these, these well thought out, super fast sets. Just like the inspiration was definitely there. But I'm saying like the fact of the matter is when I used to be a, someone like coming up and going out and watching DJs, it was no question like these DJs had the best record collections had the deepest musical knowledge, were able to rock the most genres, could do like R&B, rock, reggae, good dance hall set, good hip hop, good classics. You know, it was like they could do everything and it was always clean, always on point and always like moving. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like moving, no stalling. That's changed now because now, you know, like we were saying before, it's more just go in and like smack them with hits, let the song run, a little bit less emphasis on like the flow of a night which I think is probably why the, why younger DJs and stuff, they don't go out and they don't really, uh, that the flow of the night thing doesn't necessarily hit them. When, when we were going out, it was like so clear what you played at what time. And like, obviously that ended up getting a little stagnant, but they did that because it worked. It kept your club packed till 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. and it kept the vibe until 4 a.m. And you could like, you could get out of that. Obviously EDM threw like the biggest monkey wrench, in, you know, and, and then, kind of 70 BPM hip hop. I think for a young person, it's probably really hard to like go to a club and like get a sense of the, of a flow of a night, especially yeah. if there's four DJs. But even if there's one DJ and they're going from, you know, 70 BPM Migos up to, you know, Tiesto and, and all in the span of this hour almost, you know, it's like, it's just different. You know, it's a different vibe. You see what I'm saying to you? So, and again, within the electronic music industry, the weird thing about it is that we don't have these discussions. I have another video that I'm, I'm making that I, I go more in depth into this, but we don't really have discussions about like, you know, the culture about programming. We don't talk about it. And I come from hip hop. Originally, I come from hip hop. I used to be a hip hop DJ, very underground hip hop DJ. So a lot of what I learned comes from playing different sounds from hip hop to house to latin music to reggae like so when it comes to playing now for a russian crowd right or if i say european and i think they're russian i have russian music that i can play russian house that will go over well with them and i'll look at the various you know uh people around me which is why and it's something that i just learned right that bottle service DJs are actually very skilled. And, you know, we talked about bottle service, bottle service, but it's, it's different when it comes to electronic music because bottle service in electronic music is so different than electronic music in open format, top 40, hip hop. So I've been so involved in, you know, the electronic world that I sort of misplaced. But whenever you see hip hop, events it's a lot of bottle service a lot of popping it's a lot of this a lot of that 
And people don't realize how much talent and skill it takes to actually work those rooms. Clip four, go. The incentive isn't there. For, for us, the incentive to, to rock commercial and bottle service clubs early on was that the money was great. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it's not exposed on social media as much as some of these other elements of, of DJing. There's all of these other elements of DJing that are going viral and in bottle service, like, you know, the most you'll see is like a recap video from a nightclub, you know, but you'll never yeah. really understand like really rocking a crowd outside of like cryo and confetti and like bottle girls with sparklers. Like you'll never really experience how to really control or watch a DJ control and rock a room with multiple tables, you know, like, a table that wants reggaeton, a, a table that wants down south, a, a table that wants uh, EDM pop and just like bring everyone together and have everyone continuously spend money and stay there and have the energy high. Like it's it's not something you can capture on social media. You see what I'm saying to you? And so and I, and that's one of the things like these DJs are having that conversation. Right. And I remember and I, I, re, I repeated it. You know, in my other video, like someone was like, oh, too much talking or whatever. But that's the thing. We, we don't do the talking, right? We don't play the, the sets that we're supposed to play, especially as electronic DJs. We're going for this specialized, you know, set of music in this one sound. And we'll just play Latin house for three hours. We'll play tech for three hours. We'll play this for all of that and it's like you can't do that you got to mix it up and we don't even have these discussions and that's why it's very difficult for a lot of djs to understand because i'm the only one who does this on youtube i'm the only one who goes in depth when it comes to electronic music if you look at my catalog not in terms of in viewer viewership or whatever but in terms of knowledge and delivery there is no one else who can do what i can do you see what I'm saying to you, who has my depth and my knowledge because I'm getting older and I'm 44 now. You see what I'm saying to you? So, and because of my history of where I grew up and where I've lived, very few people have been able to attain my experience. You see what I'm saying to you? Because of when I lived and the, and the years that I lived between the, 80, the late 70s and the 80s and the 90s and the 2000s collecting vinyl, doing all that stuff, L listening to mixtapes, you know, like, so it's very, 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 very different today. Belonging would go a long way toward explaining malignant egalitarianism. We cannot be equal if my age gives me some advantage, mm. if my memory gives me, because by definition at 57, I have more memory than you, mm -hmm. like period, mm. it's defined. Mm. So automatically I'm superior to you. It's, this has to be immediately eliminated. Mm. I mean, it's a serious threat to malignant uh, egalitarianism. So history itself and memory are eliminated. So the last thing I'm going to say before we get into the tutorial, when it comes to choosing music, um, there was a subscriber the other day. Thank you. I forget your name. Um, I, I'll put a screenshot up here. And he mentioned, you know, how to find music, right? Because he's into the deep stuff and whatever, he's not really into the, into the top 40. Mind you, unfortunately, when you get into electronic music, you don't have as many opportunities as those who are in the top 40 and so forth and so on. So you have to be okay with that. You have to be okay with not working, right? Clip five, go. So another, the guy I was telling you about, that's like my favorite card magician, the guy that taught, that showed me the Navy SEAL, but just an amazing magician as a library. He, um, he's like this genius that if he came here, which he never would, cause he would never show anybody anything. But if he did, and he showed you a couple of moves, like the first move he showed me was actually a card move called Ascension, where he makes the card float right through the deck. And like the greatest magician of all time, like card magician said, it was one of the greatest tricks ever done. You won't be able to find it anywhere cause it's not a video, but he, um, he only does it to a couple of magicians. So he performs for like, you know, a handful of his friends. He shows a move and it's mind blowing. And luckily he showed me stuff when I was young, but 
he'll never ever perform. He's like, does a painter paint so he can show people or does a painter paint to paint? But whenever you're on the phone with him, you just hear cards. Like he's like, <laughs> and he's do no, and he's doing it. He's doing, I'm telling you like 13, day long. 13 hours a day, he's doing card moves wow. alone. And I said, but I was like, Bill, what do you do? Do you like do the trick to yourself and be like, ah, how did I do that? You know what I mean? <laughs> but well, he's, he doesn't believe that it's not to him. It's not a performance to him. It's, it's just about the technical love and feel of, of that. Well, that's not, there's a Japanese phrase for that about doing something over and over and over and over. They're the exact same thing over and over again to achieve a level of perfection that is uh, almost physically unattainable to mere mortals. You know what I'm saying to you? Like, I'm okay with it. Um, but when it comes to music nowadays, Number one, yes, there is an issue with so much music so that it takes you longer to find music. But you still have to put in that work. You still have to put in an hour, at the minimum, an hour one day of the week to look for music, right? I take about two hours at least once a week just to look at music. And then just, you know, but I find that I'm only getting maybe like 10, 15 out of the two hours. Whereas before in one hour, I would get 30 songs, right? But that's number one. Number two, because we're specializing now, like I said before, we're doing sets of of uh, this groovy house now. Now disco stuff, right? Is We got this new disco and disco stuff. Everyone's playing a whole two hours of that. You have... Um, uh, what's his name again? Um, I forget that guy with the with the mask and, and and the horn, right? He plays like a funky set, but he plays that sound the entire two three hours, right? The EDM DJs play that sound the entire set. So the problem is when you're actually looking for music, you shouldn't be looking for a particular sound. Look for just good music, and eventually you will fill your folders into these with with the music and eventually that folder of deep or a folder of whatever genre that you're into will eventually fill up but that makes you a better dj because you are able to then incorporate different sounds so you can play at different times of the night you can play it at uh, open and you can play at close and you can play at peak hour and you'll be able to understand how to go up and down clip number six go and what I've seen at Everyday People is a lot of people that I've given looks to, young and old, and veterans. You got some real trigger happy mugs out there, right? I've seen them like ruin the vibe or like damage the arc at a party or kill the energy too early on, on the late night side. You know what I mean? And every, and every single time I got to hop on with like a fire extinguisher and put the fire out and fix it. And I, and I would keep doing it. And while I was in Zanzibar, while I was in South Africa, I was thinking to myself, why do I have to keep doing it? You know what I'm saying? Why do I have to come clean up after messy DJs? I'm like, it's going to be me. It's going to be the people I trust. And it's going to be it's gonna be the people who can show me something. As far as anybody that's entitled for a set, just because, you know, they think they're lit or they think they got a certain amount of followers or because they've been coming to the party routinely and they constantly support which I, you know, I'm, I'm truly grateful for, that no longer entitles you to a set. You know, the only thing that entitles you to a set is being an excellent DJ. You see why it's important? And then, so you see why these conversations are important to have? Why when you have other DJs that are just doing tutorials and like not really discussing, and again, you know, with all respect, you know, that DJ was like, oh, you know, you're talking too much. That's why. Because other DJs are talking about even the veterans are messing up in top 40 gigs. So you think you're any different? Again, I'm not disrespecting you, but that's the deal. Like, you think you're any different? The conversations I had, top DJs who are playing in Vegas right now, who have their own parties in LA and all these places, like you saw, are having problems with DJs not understanding how to rock a room. So then, therefore, he has to now do his own sets in his own party, whereas before he had other DJs doing it. And a conversation with a DJ who, like, maybe maybe four years ago, four, maybe three to four years ago, like, he, he used to open for me at Omnia, right? Good DJ, really good DJ, but he was just, like, kind of, like, 
just young, just like a little like you know, just he was kind of on the mic. He was like he was going like kind of going crazy and like not really playing for girls and stuff. So we was uncomfortable when we, we see each other. But then when we saw each other that last week. He just, you know, we were talking. He's like, yo, man, like, I just want to say you were absolutely right four or five years ago. Like, I really didn't realize how to, like, open a room until I started DJing six hours. And I realized that there's an arc to a night. And he's like, I didn't realize that I was playing could have been played two hours later. And I could have been, you know, he's like, I didn't really realize it until I started DJing all the whole night and really, like, having to go through a whole catalog of music. So it's, I think it's his first time really doing the whole night. So, but he yeah. learned about the arc on like how to hold back songs and how to slowly build it up and build it up and then really hit him over the head and then kind of like bring it bring it back down before, right before closing, but then bring, bring it back up. You know what I mean? So he was right. just, and, and we was talking about it and it was it was one of those things where I thought it was kind of beautiful that he understood it like later on, like that we were able to have a conversation about that. You see what I'm saying to you? So when I'm talking to you, I'm telling you, there is nobody else giving you this information. The way that I do it, no one else. I am the number one right now. And yes, I'm going to toot my horn because no one else is doing it. Look around you. Look around any from 2013 till, till now. Nobody's doing it. At the end of the day, the DJ stuff here, it's not going to make a lot of views. And not a lot of people are going to watch this stuff because most people are into just tutorials. They just want to quick and they want to go because of what the attention deficit right now, right? It's just not there. So people are not doing long mixes. Everyone is doing short mixes, right? So that's all for now. We're going to get into this tutorial, right? And um, I'll see you on the flip side. Let's go. Cool. All right. So we're starting off with a lighter sound, okay? It may not be that you are in this position where you're playing this sound, okay? But it's one of those things where I'm going to go from the one extreme to the other, right? So it gives you an idea of how the programming of a Latin house is. Now, I don't normally go two, three hours playing Latin house, but just for the sake of instructional purposes, I will show you and you'll understand how I go from, let's say this sound, and I progress into the more uh, daytime to the more Sort of like pre-evening, evening, night, and then so on, okay? I'm not going to go too far, too deep. Um, I'll just do one, two tracks each, but you'll have an idea of how to set your times, right? So if you're playing like in a day party, you can start off with something like this, or if you get there a little later, you may start with some of the stuff that, I play, that I'll play later on. However, you'll have an idea, and that's why I say it's very important that when you, when you get your music, it's not just about... Uh, you know, looking for just one sound, so I'm gonna just gonna get Latin. A lot of a lot of uh, um, DJs fall into the trap of playing or of collecting Latin house, but of a certain style, right? So I'm just gonna go Latin funk, and then they'll just go Latin funk because that's what they they don't have the opportunity to play all night. Segofredo gave me the opportunity playing there for seven years, playing from 9 p.m. until 10, 11, 12, 1 a.m. So I was able to go from the very beginning, play stuff like this, and then end off with peak hour stuff. So that's that was my my education. And a lot of DJs now don't have that opportunity. They're playing one hour sets and they're playing at peak hour, and they don't have that opportunity to program from open to close, right? So let's get into it. Let me go ahead and you know provide you something that's gonna go well with this, and then we'll move on to the next set. I don't have too much of this stuff, but I have it. It's very important that you have it, right? Now remember, I used to be hip hop. So with hip hop, I, I have I have all the different sounds. I don't play hip hop anymore, but I had r and I had the reggae, I had the salsa, I had the, the fast salsa, the slow salsa, the classic salsa, I had the reggaeton, I had all that stuff.
you want to keep it steady especially with this because people are eating sometimes or people are just hanging out no abrupt some guys will go from this some DJs will go from this to like a different sound even though it's the same tempo but different texture and you can tell it's just different The measures have to be on point with this because you don't want clashing. This is very slow mixing, no tricks. And you see the, the bass doesn't kick until later. So I'm gonna have to get people adjusted. See, with the music. I have to keep it. Can't bring it too down. Because of the highs, watch. You don't want to create that death space. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna now bring it to something a little bit more faster, right? Now I'm gonna look for something that's gonna go with this. Very flavorful, right? I'm not gonna go just because it's Latin. Oh, so I'm gonna go with Latin, no. You got to find the right stuff that actually goes.
I created that distraction there because I mistimed it. So there was too much time in between. So I needed to, but I felt it coming. So I had to do a little bit of a dip, kill that bass, and then bring it back up. And then it ended up being on time, you know? But again, you're not always gonna be perfect. The time is not always gonna be perfect. So when it's not, you do a little bit, you know, not too much, but something that's a little bit refreshing vibrant for the occasion and for the sound right you don't want to go too crazy don't do anything that would damage the texture of what you have going on right now because again you're not late hour you're not peak hour you're just getting into the groove all right so let's see now let's go a little bit more daytime you know i'm gonna give you something that's different than this right this is more like more like uh like happy happy let's go a little bit more something that's a little bit more serious right all right again it's a totally different because i would have had to if i needed to do the mix i would have had to go from that to something else, but it's just too much time, right? I don't wanna have to do a whole entire mix just to explain. So this is a different sound, okay? This is more daytime, and but you can also play it at night, okay? Um, so in between peak and opening, right? That sort of, so let's say you're playing at, at nine, right? At a bar, at a lounge, you wanna go, but you can play this around like Depending on if it's packed at nine, then yeah, you can pay it at nine. But you know, you can go around like 10, 10 30, you know, going into and leading up into more of like the peak hour stuff. But again, the luxury of playing at these places that afford you to play the sound is you can extend it, you can play it longer. So you don't have to play only one or two songs of this, you can extend it. So I could go for like two hours of the stuff that I was playing before, you know, but this is a little bit more. You know, 
It's still groovy, it's still, you know, for the ladies. I'm gonna move it up for instruction of purpose.
we'll go over some honorable mentions. It's different stuff that, you know, Like different stuff that you can play. Something like this. Just different stuff you can play during the day, during the night. All right, so we're, we're moving forward. All right, we went from the basic beachy stuff to the more daytime stuff. I gave you a couple of, um, what do you call it again, uh, samples, like, I was just tracks that, you know, you would normally be able to play around that time, right? So now we're gonna move into more of the evening, um, or even if you're during the evening, during more of the later hours, okay? And this is still groovy, still cool, still flavorful, right? It's got a punch to it, but you can tell this is getting a little bit more serious, right? But not dark serious, but fun, right? Right, you know, all right, we're, we're, we're starting a party now, you know? So this track right here, it starts off with a, a long intro, so which means that I'm probably gonna have to use that acapella because there's gonna be a lot of dead space. So I'm gonna have to maneuver it in a way and do some echoing and some, some I'm gonna have to cover it a lot, meaning that if I just leave the loop on, on We Gonna Feel It, it's not gonna, It's not gonna make sense.
I gotta leave this. Until it starts to build. close one man but a lot of things going on but again when you are used to doing things you free your mind right you you have more bandwidth to play and free your mind and be more composed right All right, so we're gonna move on to something else then. All right. This is again, you're probably at night, you bring it down, right? You've gone up and then you've come down again. So, I'll move it for instructional purposes. Right, it's a little bit more serious, right? Deeper grooves. I did I went with a song that I know has that same that deep groove right that deep beat because a lot of folks when you're mixing you you, you go for different patterns right and it's okay to change the pattern throughout the mix but you don't want to do it like immediately like from one song to the next you want to carry like a certain vibe and the components right the um, the texture has to be similar. Right, so now you can tell like this is a different space, dude. You know what I'm saying? Like you're slowing it down a little bit. Right, you can play it at different times, you know, like if it's at night, you know, you want to slow things down a little bit. New crowd is coming. Especially, again, if you're playing long sets, you know what I'm saying? If you're playing like a, a few, like, you know, like an hour, two hours, Sometimes you may not be able to get, so you may have to play this stuff in the beginning and then move up. But that's why I like playing long sets, right? Because I want to be able to like maximize. And the thing is, 
I wouldn't just be playing, that's the thing, right? I wouldn't be playing just Latin house. I'd be playing different grooves that are something that are similar to this, you know, that has that, that deeper groove, but it would be more like soulful or maybe like a techie, techie soul, melodic tech, but more like a deep with some percussive, but not necessarily Latin. Or even I can have some Afro in there. All right, let's move it forward. If it starts to come in too early, I'm gonna have to loop it a little bit. Get on them knees and bow down, bow down. Get on them knees right now. Number one, number one, don't you forget it. Let it play on. Cause what happens? See?
I'm gonna stay something similar, but I'm gonna go something something new. You know, it was like they could do everything and it was always clean, always on point and always like moving. You know what I mean? Like moving, no stalling. it goes into the breakdown too quickly. Leave some space, let them get used to it. I'm coming for you.
I gotta go something that's similar. Right now, I don't have anything that's new to go with this, so I'm gonna have to go with something old that's a little bit more pumpy. I'm thinking Seven Fisher, DJ Choose. But, um, I forget the name of that song. Seven Fisher. Uh, damn, damn. Para siempre, para siempre, siempre. That's why I love the computer, man. I can go for them. It was like they could do everything and it was always clean, always on point and always like moving. You know what I mean? Like moving, no stalling.
So I am done with that. Now, again, just to recap, you see how I went from the beginning to the to the end from like that beachy style. Again, depending on where you are, it will depend and dictate where you start from. But you see how you carry vibes. That's why within the folder of Latin House, I have the beachy stuff. I have the percussive stuff. I have the big stuff. I have the more pumpy stuff. I have the techie stuff. Again, you don't collect by just Latin house. Oh, because that's the problem. You're going to run into this issue where it's like, oh, I can't find Latin house or I can't find all that Latin house because you shouldn't be just looking for specific songs. You just collect music. All right. Collect, 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 collect. I collect Jordans. I collect sneakers. I collect, I'm collecting the Di- Adoras from Italy. So you know, you just find different stuff. But if you just focus on like, oh, I'm just only just focusing on this, focusing on this, you're never always going to get what you want. So you have to just look for just good music, which is going to make you a great DJ from open to close. And you can rock it at any point in time. And then from there, you'll be able to do your thing. Okay. Johnny Fontana, Half Amazing TV. We out.